Hi, this is Jason Oates from People of the Free Gift, and what you are about to watch is a small portion of a conversation that I had with Bob Gray, who is a former Jehovah's Witness, and Michael Bohm from Youth Apologetics Training. If you'd like to see the entire conversation, it is available to those who are on the $5 a month Patreon supporting uh, level, and you can find a link in the description down below. It also gets you access to all of the video material that I put out here here on YouTube, the entire conversations and interviews I've had in the past. What is the most effective question or statement a born-again Christian could give when Jehovah's Witnesses come to the door because time always seems to be limited? Mm. You That's know, as, as soon as you asked that, it came to me. The most effective question that you can ask at that point is, can you come back? Yes, I agree. Because... You know, first of all, they've caught you flat-footed. Mm. You know, you didn't expect them. Um, you know, who, who, who knows what's on their mind at that point? Uh, they would love to be able to come back and sit down and talk with you because most witnesses really don't like going door-to-door. -door. Mm. You know, they would rather have a good, what they call, return visit where they can come in, sit down, and talk with you and more effectively talk with you about things. So, yeah, can you come back? Let's make an, an appointment. Um, you know, if you have a bookshelf like, like Michael's, um, you know, they may spot that and go, hmm, yeah, this looks suspicious. Um, but yeah, uh, but questions are, you know, always the best thing to use. I, I, like, I, I don't know if you know Greg Kokel, uh, Stanford yes. Ministry, yes. the Colombo method. Yes. That. You, you just, you know, you just act dumb. It's like, you know, maybe you can help me out with this. I don't quite understand. Um, but the other question that I love that he has, and I use it a lot online, when they come up with a particular teaching, you ask them, don't ask them to defend it. You ask them, how did you personally come to that conclusion? Amen. Amen. And I think that is such a great question because... For most witnesses, for most of the teachings, if they really think about it, they're going to say, you know, the governing body told me that. Hmm. Including the fact that the governing body is the fulfillment of the faithful and discreet slave. Terrible, not a prophecy. But yeah. Yeah. But yeah can you come back? Um, I think anything, if you go too far beyond that, um, again, most of them are not prepared for any sort of deep theological discussion at that point. Uh, both of you are in a rush. Most likely they are in a car group with two other people. So they don't want to spend a whole lot of time at your door, that type of thing. So yeah, make an appointment, have them come back. You know, I'll, I'll agree with that. I'll second that. Um, obviously it didn't work out too well for me with my Jehovah's Witness experience, but um even with Mormons um, and even some Seventh-day Adventists that come to the door, um, when you're right, when they show up, you're completely caught off guard. You don't know what to say uh, because you were doing other things. You were busy doing something and all of a sudden there they are, your hair sticking in all directions. You barely woke up and you don't know what's going on. And if you schedule a meeting for another time, and then you get prayed up and you get studied up and you get your head on straight and sure they get a chance to do the same. So now you're on e equal playing ground. Yeah. Um, you know, I guess from their perspective, of course, uh, yeah. but they show up, you're prayed up and you're ready to go. And um, you know, and then also at the same time, you're able to show hospitality, show them that you love them, serve them up some cookies or some brownies or something to show them. I really do actually care for you guys. I'm not here to persecute you. Yes, we're going to talk about some hard things, yep. but, but uh, hey, we're all on this journey together, and, yep. and we're trying to know who this God is that created all of us. Well, so they're, they're not so much in that mode. And that's, <laughs> that's, that's one of the important things about the Colombo method is they come to your door, they've got the truth you don't. Yeah. Yep. They've got something that you need. And with the, with the Colombo method, you let them stay in teacher mode. And, the, and that's where you want to let them stay. Um, because if you start to assume the role of teacher, now they're not, they've lost their perception of control of the, con uh, of the conversation. And so you, you want them to think that they're still in control of it, where you've really kind of taken control just by the questions you ask. Ah.
Yeah, well, exactly. Shameless plug. Uh, the yep. inspiration for the third section in my book, uh, Sharing uh, Jesus with the Colts, was that uh, Greg Kokel book, uh, Tactics. And uh, I talk about tactics and how to take that in relation to the conversations that I find I have over and over and over again with cult members. Yep. And so, um, you know, just that's out there. It's on Amazon. 